I never believed in my wildest dreams I'd ever have anything to complain about involving Steph Curry. Steph Curry! Did somebody tell you who this was okay? If they are, I want to know who they are. I want names. I want faces. Who told you that was okay? I want to know. Because the shit ain't okay. And why would be good times be associated with a baby being a drug dealer? And talking to roaches in the shower. And then to sit up there and admit you wouldn't be watching it with your kids. Sometimes I wonder for us. Sometimes I wonder. Welcome to the Dark Times channel. And before I go ahead and get started, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you're not new to the channel and you enjoy the content so far on this channel, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me as well. And so let's go ahead and dive right in with this one. And this is one that I've been wanting to get to for a while when it pertains to Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors and being the executive producer of the new film or the new sitcom Good Times, the new animated series Good Times. And for those of y'all who haven't seen it, it's straight buffoonery. I haven't even watched it. I've seen clips, but I have no interest in watching it. I have no interest in doing a breakdown on it, dissecting it. I've seen enough. And a lot of people are giving Stephen Curry a hard time for him putting his name on this new reboot, this new Good Time series as an executive producer, especially being a so-called black man. But here's the problem with that. Stephen Curry is not a so-called black man, or at least he doesn't see himself as one. Stephen Curry and his family or his lineage come from an old Creole tradition, and they're cut from a very, very different cloth than so-called black people. And I'm going to dive into that a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and break that down a little bit later. But but before I do, I want to go ahead and let Stephen A. Smith chime in. And then, of course, I'll chime in as well. Felt compelled to really address. One of them involves a beloved black sitcom, Good Times. Believe it or not, and Mr. Steph Curry starved the Golden State Warriors. Good Times, if you recall, centered on the Evans family who live in Chicago's Cabrini Green housing project. And now it has an animated reboot on Netflix. The series premiered on April 12th and it is executive produced by Steph Curry. If I don't look happy, there's a reason. And the reason would be is because I saw an opening scene where an animated black character was in the shower talking to a cockroach. A baby was a drug dealer. That's what I saw. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, are you kidding me? An infant who sells crack? An infant who sells crack. When was that ever a part of Good Times? It's a reboot. Thelma herself spoke out against this. I never believed in my wildest dreams I'd ever have anything to complain about involving Steph Curry. Steph Curry! I mean, a paragon of virtue. One of the greatest role models we've ever seen in the history of sports. And so I'm definitely going to have to disagree with that. Stephen Curry has never been a good role model for the so-called black man. Somebody who does and says all the right things, all the right things that corporate media wants you to say, that doesn't necessarily make you a good role model. All it does is make you marketable. And Stephen A. Smith knows a thing or two about that. So for me, the definition of a role model isn't somebody who does and says all the things that people want him to say. For me, it's the opposite of that. It's somebody that's gonna have the courage to say all the things that nobody wants him to say. And that includes saying no to a Good Times reboot, especially when your name is on it as the executive producer. That's what makes a good role model. When I'm judging role models and people that our youth should be trying to model themselves after, I'm not judging people off their status their celebrity status, how much money they make, their profession necessarily. What's your family life like? How's your wife representing you when she's out here in these streets? Because being a role model is a lot more than shooting jump shots and cashing million dollar checks. Did you have diversity in there? Did somebody tell you who this was okay? If they are, I want to know who they are. I want names. I want faces. Who told you that was okay? I want to know. Because the shit ain't okay. Now, of course, Steph Curry was asked about the show. 
at a press conference at the Chase Center last Friday. Here's what he had to say. Good times. Everybody knows what it is. And it's on a pedestal of shows that represent black culture, black social commentary, black family. This is a different take on that. So the name will ring, but an animated series that's kind of driven towards the adult audience. It's a little different. And so you take that for what it is. And I would not be watching with my kids, but I think it has a little something for everybody. Well, for the right audience, for sure. Respectfully, Steph Curry. That's insulting. And so I'm going to go ahead and take it a step further. I'm going to take it somewhere that Stephen A. Smith can't take it. Somewhere that Stephen A. Smith won't take it. It's more than insulting. What it is, is telling. That last sentence that Stephen Curry said, he said, but I think it has a little something for everybody. Well, for the right audience, for sure. So that's very telling for me. Stephen Curry knows exactly what kind of content that he put his name on. What kind of content that he stamped. And he was all in on it. He was all in on everybody laughing and Kai Kai and Ken at the expense of so-called black people. And he was okay with it because he does not consider himself a so-called black person. He considers himself an other, a Creole. And so he could sit up there and watch this show with everybody else and laugh at it and not have any connection to it, not put himself in the position of these characters, not put his family in the position of these characters. He's looking at it through the lens of an other because that's exactly what he views himself as. And for those of y'all who don't know about the Creole class, that Creole class was something else. That Creole class was something else. You're talking about a group of people that married and got into relationships to stay light, to keep that light skin. Would you believe that there is a document that proves that they actually had a pact that they would do that okay uh there's a lot of talk about why is it that so many creoles uh married other creoles there's a a term or a phrase they used to say keeping it in the family and it was literally literally that am i saying that my ancestors were committing incest no what that meant was <clears throat> we had a class of people of our own. The Jean du Couleur were in a very unique position. They could not marry slaves. <laughs> they could not marry whites sometimes. Sometimes they could, sometimes they couldn't based on the law. Did they have consensual relationships outside of marriage? Yes, they did. Here's the thing. These people were not like us. They had a whole different set of dynamics and it was a different world a different time socially there were things that weren't acceptable what think of it however you want to but what wasn't acceptable at the time were people who made a certain amount of money dating down or marrying down okay these people were all about looks okay now appearances that was big they could not marry down that's literally it was like when i tell you that these people were the richest people in america it was like the kardashian like a kardashian dating a high school uh basketball coach it was like that i'm telling you they were rich they were rich with a capital r so Many of the people who were slaves that didn't work themselves up, right, um, after they became free or whatever, they couldn't marry them and they couldn't marry white sometimes. So what they did was they all created a little community within themselves because they were not really able to mix outside of that. And they kind of ran with their own people just the same way that we do in terms of finances it wasn't skin tone it was finances if you were on their level financially okay now many of them tried to keep the money within the family because it was their way of trying to build community uh because so many things with the the whites it was caused it was problematic so this was their black wall street type of mentality they had 
made pacts to marry each other's families and that's what and so just like i said earlier this is exactly what's going on with stephen curry and the curries in particular they're part of that old creole condition where they're intermarrying whether it's friends of the family whatever it takes to keep that light skin going to keep that light skin creole lineage going because they see themselves as a different class they see themselves as a completely different group and that's the only way to explain how somebody like stephen curry being in his position could put his name on a sitcom like this something that you know is going to be at the expense of so-called black people that's the only way you can explain something like this but that's all i had on this one make sure you guys go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section and if you haven't dropped a thumbs up yet, go ahead and do that as well. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. And as usual, peace and chaos.